in terms of how cultural institutions, I think, fit in, uh, you know, I've been doing this for uh, enough time to uh, know the people behind the scenes. And uh, so uh, a, a lot of people, like, uh, when I meet somebody, they say, what do you do for a living? And, you know, like, uh, is commonly asked. I say, oh, well, I design exhibits for museums. And the co most common reaction is, I've never met anybody who does that. Oh, you're the first person I've ever met who does that. Yet there are millions and millions upon millions of visitations to museums and cultural institutions every year, just in the United States. So why are they going? What are they crafting it for? And what is my role and what is the role of the, of the, the humans, the individuals behind crafting things? Mm -hmm. uh, we are storytellers. We have a lens, uh, those of us who are crafting these things, a lens and a way to tell a story. Uh, a cultural institution is not the end-all to be all voice of authority on any given subject, uh, but what they are is uh, they are scholarly and have looked and examined uh, an aspect of the world and use that view to convey to others in a way that's open-ended that allows people to also make assumptions and to make decisions themselves about what the content means. And so what, what, what I think that we try to do and what I try to do is uh, e exhibits that convey facts and particulars. I went to the Washington Monument. How, how tall is the Washington Monument? Monument? Okay. I don't know how tall it is. It's 573 feet. It's 423 feet. I have no idea how tall it is. Every single person who goes asks that question, but they don't walk away with the facts of the Washington Monument. They walk away with the emotion. They walk away with the feeling and how they responded to that. And so what I want to do is I want to provide the facts and details, but not have them be in the way of allowing people to connect emotionally to the storyline. Uh, so a, a phrase that I often use is that uh, my role is to find the shortest path between the head and the heart. And if that path is direct and thick and strong, then people will come to an exhibit, they'll see to a museum, they'll see things, they'll see objects, they'll learn about facts and particulars, but they will have arrived at a place where it matters to them. Because that, that is ultimately the question. Why does this matter and why does this matter to me? Mm -hmm. For me, one of the one of the aspects of the story that doesn't reveal itself immediately, but it fold, unfolds slowly, is the complexity of the human endeavor. And here we have, in simple terms, I think that you could create villains and heroes. You could create in this storyline good and bad in clear-cut kinds of ways. And there are things that this exhibit, uh, in particular, uh, and particularly as a, as a white person uh, in this, uh, uh, for me, in viewing the story, um, not a native person, I, I think that it is easy to condemn some and, uh, uh, and heroize others. Uh, Yet the human condition doesn't really quite lend itself that way. You have this John Shivington who, if on the face of it you look at him and you turn him into a really bad fellow, right? He was a strong abolitionist. He was a complex person. It's hard to measure what is good and bad, and to do that in with this particular setting is... Uh, uh, Something that, that I hope that when visitors see the exhibit, they get that there are those who suffered and those who, I think you could say, triumphed, but it's not so simple. It's not as, mm -hmm. as clear as one or the other. And uh, even one other thing that I walk away with from it is it's also easy to think of victims as being of a universal mindset. And those who ended up on the short side of stories, uh, of, of history, being, uh, being people who have one particular 
view and vision about their role as victims, and that's not really true either. Uh, in the Arapaho and Cheyenne story in this, one of the things I really didn't know much about beforehand was also the complexity of Native American culture and uh, that amongst Native Americans at the time in the 1860s, there were certainly those who were uh, very much like Chief Niwot and they felt that through peaceful acts and through accommodation and trying to reach out to others, they would uh, end up with a, a better place for themselves and for others. And there were others of his contemporaries, Native Americans, who had the exact opposite perspective, mm -hmm. uh, and all shades of gray in between. And so it's not it, it's easy to look back 150 years and say uh, that that everyone, uh, you know, the Native Americans, they were, they just lost everything and they were all trying to, you know, get in, uh, get by in a particular way. And, and their complexity is just as complex as ours today. Uh, so uh, th those are some of the things that I that I walked away from and, and hope others see it.